We extend a special welcome to those who are single, married, divorced, poly, gay, trans, queer, straight, cis, filthy rich, dirt poor, live in a mansion, or are sleeping outside right now. Yo no habla inglés. We welcome you if your family has been here since the Mayflower or you just got here last week without papers. We extend a special welcome to those who have just rolled out of bed and are watching in their pajamas. Or have worn your Sunday best. And especially those who got lost on social media and wound up here by mistake. We welcome those who are in recovery or are still addicted. You are welcome here if you help protect and serve or just got out of jail. We don't care if you're more religious than the Pope or just starting out on your religious journey. You are welcome here if you believe following Jesus is only one of many paths to spiritual enlightenment. We welcome those who think the earth is flat, those who can't spell, and those with multiple degrees. We offer a special welcome to those who have been harmed by organized religion, and those who had religion choked down their throats as a kid, and those who could especially use a prayer right now. We welcome everyone, every day, every day. with open, open hearts, hearts. Open minds and open doors. Join me for this prayerful reading of Caitlin Shetler's poetry. This poem in particular is entitled Iceberg. Do no harm unless you are faced with hate and injustice and then do all the harm. And if they tell you it's going overboard, grab your jacket and jump or better yet mutiny or even better yet be the iceberg. They will panic, but show them their lifeboats and give them the choice to live liberating or drowned oppressing because cruising the seas of privilege can't save them from the storms or protest so make the waves trouble the waters sink the system and abandon ship amen our first scripture reading this morning is from first peter chapter 3 verses 13 through 22. now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good but even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an account of the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, 
when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight people, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, author authorities, and powers made subject to him. Our second scripture reading is from John chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned, I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. May God bless the reading of this holy word. Thanks be to God. My name is Deidre. Thank you for joining me for Children's Time. We're continuing with sign language again this week. This time we're going back to the beginning, all the way back to Genesis chapter 1. It's the creation story and there's a lot of good stuff in there, a lot of good things we could talk about and do. One time we did Legos and made the creation story out of Legos. I don't know if any of y'all remember that. But we are going to do Genesis chapter 1 verse 31. God saw everything he had made. It was supremely good. So here we go. And remember, American Sign Language is its own language, so we don't do every single word. It's a little bit different. So the sign for God, you point upwards and you bring it down and make your hand flat. So point and then a flat for God. C, point at your eye and then just kind of move it away. C, everything or all. Take your left hand flat with your palm pointed in, your other hand up, like this, and then you just kind of circle around and meet. So it's kind of like you're bringing it all together, everything together. 
And then we do the sign God again. Made. This one's kind of neat. You kind of, it's kind of like you're making something. You just kind of twist your hands together, make two fists and kind of twist your hands together. And then good. This from your chin down to your hand is good. Okay. A lot more signs, kind of a lot more going on than we usually do, but we can do this. I know we can. Okay. God saw everything God had made and it was good. Okay, let's try it again. God saw everything that God had made and it was good. There we go. A lot to learn there, but you did it. And we'll do some more next week. Thank you for joining me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of each of our hearts be with you. Beautiful God. Amen. If you love me, he says, if you love me. Jesus says in John chapter 14, verses 15 through 21, if you love me, I will never leave you. Not only will I never leave you, I will give you another advocate. This is the spirit of truth. For me personally, when I am called to speak in a place in which it's going to be uncomfortable and I speak up for injustice, the spirit of truth needing to be told, I need the advocate because my voice shakes, my palms sweat. It starts off all with a pit in my stomach. My knees wobble and there's a ringing in my ears. I need the spirit of truth. And in those moments when I've spoken the truth, I've leaned on the advocate for the strength that I didn't have in those moments. First Peter, Peter reminds us, who will harm you if you're eager to do what is good? You may already have your list ready of people who indeed are trying to hurt you when you do good, the ways in which they seem to be out for you. For those of us who have been victims of abuse or oppression, the call that First Peter gives of a non-retaliation can feel problematic. As we move through the world, we indeed are witness to so much suffering. An expectation of non-action seems to be inco incongruent with Christian teaching. Some of it may be also global in the way we experience suffering. Parts of us might hear silently the suffering of others that others aren't able to see, and even some suffering may be internal. The call and marking of a disciple is to speak up when we recognize injustice. In our mind's eye, sometimes this injustice is an epic battle between good and evil, fighting Nazis, sitting in civil rights sit-ins, boycotting apartheid, full inclusion for GLTBQI rights, sexism in the workplace. In my experience, some of you may have indeed fought in those epic battles whether it be on the battlefield, sit-ins, or boycotting apartheid. Also, injustice can happen in small, little ways, microaggressions that aren't monumental and aren't single moments. It happens over time, which much smaller ways in which we can all join in the struggle against oppression by speaking honestly and over time, taking the time to powerfully speak out about injustice. Christ himself became an example of this activity when we read the gospel accounts of his passion. There is a clear account of where he stood on the social justice issues of his day. When Christians fail to speak out about abuse and injustice, we fail to follow God's commandments. John 14 reminds us that if we love God, we need to keep the commandments. And when we lack integrity to fight for injustice, we aren't acting as disciples. In our house, we explain integrity as doing the right thing, even when no one's looking. The question I must ask is, what are we doing to combat the injustice before us? What are you doing to combat the injustice before you with integrity? The CDC states, while the data is still emerging, a disproportionate burden of the illness and death among people with COVID-19 are people of color. This virus is making plain something that we cannot continue to ignore, the healthcare inequity, inequities that exist in our system. This is part of our sin.
People of color are more often likely to live in densely populated areas because of institutionalized racism in the form of housing discrimination and often can't practice social distancing. Often, people of color are serving on the front lines of this epidemic as essential workers in industries we all benefit from with lower access to healthcare. We are not following God's commandment when we don't speak up for injustice. Jesus was asked, what is God's greatest law? Jesus responded to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. To what lengths would you make sure you are safe? Have you done the same for your neighbor? In doing so, if you feel your voice shaking or your knees wobbling or the need to help while you do it, call upon the Holy Spirit to be with you, to be your advocate, to advocate for those who are the least among us. The words of John come to me. I will not leave you orphaned. I'm coming to you. And in a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You will also live. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for our mask makers, for our Boy Scouts delivering our peace lilies, for those of you that continue to send your notes of thanks, gratitude, for those of you that continue to support us financially. Thank you. Thank you for watching, tuning in, commenting, sharing. Thank you. Come on. sheltering in place, making sure that we are safe. Make sure your neighbors are safe by living by God's greatest commandment, loving your neighbor as yourself. Go in God's peace, go in God's love, go in God's grace. Amen.